You know where we're going to go, baby. That uh, is right. Um, you know, probably, uh, I guess by technicality, you know, I, I, there's been some other games throughout the day that I guess would probably be deemed bigger upsets, most recently Texas State beating Baylor. But we got to start with the story of the day. Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, Colorado. The last three, four weeks, Jason, we've really started ramping up our college football preview stuff. And the one thing we've talked about, we said we don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but we are excited to see what the Colorado Buffaloes bring to the field. Well, what they brought was a lot of excitement and a win today. By now, everybody knows the story, but Colorado goes to play the reigning national runners-up TCU. They win 45-42. to Shador Sanders, Coach Prime's son, 500 yards passing in game one, a school record passing. Uh, Freshman Dylan Edwards was phenomenal out of the backfield. He had four touchdowns. And I think the story out of that game is probably Travis Hunter playing both ways, uh, 117 yards passing, an interception, uh, easily could have had another touchdown or, or a touchdown or two on offense and another interception on defense. Jason, we were hoping for a show. We got a show. Coach Prime, Colorado is 1-0 and today after beating TCU. Yeah, I mean, I said that I was going to be riveted to this no matter what the record looked like. And I didn't mean week one. I meant at the end of the year I was still going to be paying attention to Colorado because it was just going to be can't miss. I didn't know what it was going to look like. But I liked the hire when it happened. And I didn't understand why Dion faced as much criticism as he did for some of the things that he did. I understand that he put himself out on, on the front, and obviously that's going to lead to some controversy, but he went to an awful team that had done nothing in ages, and he basically went in there and said, hey, man, these guys are just not good enough. You're not good enough to be here. And I know that's going to ruffle feathers, but that's just the way it is sometimes. And I think more impressively than anything, I don't know what we're going to get from here, but I know it's going to be a lot better than what they've had there in a long time. It's going to be interesting week after week. Seeing them as an opponent on a good team schedule is going to now mean more. And I went and I looked at Colorado's schedule. Colorado, based on the performance today, I think Mm -hmm. they only played two teams that were preseason ranked higher than the one they beat today. Because Oregon State is the the third-ranked team in addition to Oregon and USC that they play. And Oregon State entered the season ranked 18, whereas TCU was 17. They went on the road to TCU and beat that team by outscoring them and then getting pretty much one defensive stop at the end of the game that really critically had to happen to win the ball game. But they did it in such a spectacular fashion with the numbers that Sanders put up with the skill position guys showing out, and with Dion afterwards in the press conference going full prime. Like, this was as perfect as it could have been, not just for Colorado, not just for Dion Sanders, but for everybody that covers college football. If these guys are good or compelling, and I think we already have the answer to the second one, the first one is still yet to be determined, but so far so good. That is going to be an incredible storyline to watch. Yeah, and let me say this is that, you know, listen, it's an incredible storyline. They were a 20 and a half point favorite, but let's give credit where it's due to not only Coach Prime, uh, uh, Dion. I, I heard Martin and VJ talking about this before we came on the idea that, frankly, his team looked better prepared, better coached today than mm-hmm. TCU. But also, let's give credit to some of these players because, you know, I I saw some of this today of, oh, you know, I mean, where does this rank in the all-time upsets? Like, And I'm talking about credible college football writers. And it's like, I don't want to diminish what happened today. And to your point, I don't want to diminish how much Colorado has overcome just in getting to this point in flipping their roster. But this is a team that does have real talent. Now, they don't have the -the across-the-board talent of the top teams. We get that. No one is saying that. But Travis Hunter was the number one high school player in America. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dylan Edwards, the kid who had four touchdowns today, flipped from Notre Dame. He's known, known Deion Sanders since he was a little kid. Shador Sanders was offered by Alabama and Georgia coming out of high school but chose to play for his father first at Jackson State and now at Colorado. And so... I don't think we have to put a cap on 
Um, you know, and, and we have three hours to break this all down, Jason, of, of what is the ceiling, what are the, what's the win-loss record going to be, but this was not a fluke. This was not a everything, let, let's make this clear, everything went right for Colorado, everything went wrong for TCU. That wasn't the case at all. Like, if you watch this game, TCU, the team that played for a national championship last year, and admittedly they lost a lot, uh, TCU did not look like the overwhelmingly more talented team and and. Colorado had a bunch of trick plays, a bunch of this, a bunch of that. Colorado's got players, again, I I, I don't even know where I want to go with this necessarily, but I, I just want to get that out there. I think, you know, people were, some some were more surprised than others, but, but people are treating it as like it's an all-time upset, and it's like, no. Coach Prime won a lot at Jackson State. He knows what he's doing. This isn't a fly-by-night thing. Um, and some of the guys that he brought with him are really, really, really good, and it was really cool for Shador Sanders, a guy like Travis Hunter, et cetera, to have the stage that they did today. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. I think that's well said. I, I don't like. I think the most. This is the biggest compliment I can pay Dion at this stage. I wasn't blown away by the fact that they won the game because he's proven himself. I know it's at a smaller level, but you talk about the talent that he brought in, and of course TCU had lost a lot, as you mentioned, including QB one and their top wide receiver. Um. This was this was an indication that this is a team on the on the rise, and we talked about this last week because of NIL, because of the transfer portal, because of the way college football has changed. You don't have to wait four years to get your guys in the door to turn the corner. Mm-hmm. If you're a good coach that can bring people to the dance, like Lincoln Riley last year at USC getting Addison and getting all these guys to come out there and, of course, getting Caleb Williams on top of it. And now you've got Deion Sanders doing it. If you have a coach like that, you can flip and turn this thing around very, very quickly. Now, that works in your favor if you're that guy. If you're the opposite, you get a shorter leash because you're no longer going to get the grace period that you used to get in college football because it has become different to acquire talent and to build a proper roster. But what we know is Dion knows football. Dion's a smart guy. Yes, he's outspoken, and as such, there are going to be some people that are rooting for him to fail. And by the way, some people in our industry that I am sure are rooting for Dion Sanders to fail and are covering every negative thing that they can find about Dion Sanders along the way. But if Dion Sanders wins big at Colorado, uh, it's not going to shock me, but it is going to go down as one of the real turning points in college football. That's the difference. It's not that it was an upset today. It was just a signification of kind of the sea change in college football and what has changed in terms of roster building and a time frame with which to become a contender, if that makes sense. No, it does. And and I was actually going to ask you that is that um, I just went, you know, I just went through some of the, 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 you know, resumes, if you will, of some of the star players from today and I was thinking about this. Now, now I'm not going to sit here and pretend I did not pick TCU to win, although I did pick Colorado to cover. I thought it would be competitive, and I thought they could win. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and lie and say, oh, I, I, saw, I, I said Colorado was going 9-3 and three this year, and, right. and who knows. But, but my question is, Jason, is I was thinking about this. Why, why were people so convinced that this wasn't going to work? Because it's exactly what you just said, is that you go back to – TCU last year, first year head coach, play for a national championship. USC last year, 11 wins in the regular season, first year head coach, play for a Pac-12 title. LSU, Brian Kelly, play for an SEC title. And I was thinking about this is, again, I am not going to sit here and pretend that I thought Deion Sanders uh, Sanders and Colorado were going to win every game or even that they were going to win this game. But I I, I guess I was surprised in the lead-up to the season by the people that were so adamant, like, well, I mean, this is it, it's going to be just a, a three, four year thing. I mean, you can't you can't bring in this many new guys and have success. And it's like, I get football is a team sport and continuity helps and all that. But one to the point that you brought up at the beginning, this was by far the worst Power Five team in college football yes. last year. So you had to bring in new bodies to be competitive. But two, it's not as though we didn't see last year. Literally, I just gave three examples, and there are plenty more, of teams that were able to make a significant jump in one offseason. So I was thinking about that today, and maybe there's no perfect answer, Jason, but it did strike me of 
Why why were so many people so adamant that this couldn't work? You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, I again, I think it's because of the polarizing nature of Deion Sanders, and I do think that there are still quite a few folks that want their old college football and want to believe that they're, they still understand the sport. The sport has changed. You have to evolve in the way that you think about this sport now. As you observe it, as you predict it, as you look at it, as you value rank it, it's different. Everything has changed, and we've seen it. I mean, look, Tennessee last year brings in Hypo, and look at what they've done. And now you're seeing this at Colorado. This is going to continue. That's why if Matt Rule struggles for a couple years in Nebraska, look out. Hey, it ain't going to take long. How about like Billy Napier? Gonna, yeah, Thursday night, Nap- yep. Napier may not survive. I mean, I think we'll be talking about that later. But I, I think that I do think there's a polarizing presence in Dion, and there's some people that just he rubs them the wrong way and whatever. Um, but I also think that maybe they believe that this wouldn't work from the beginning, so they want to try and just continually find fault in it to pump up their original prediction. I think at some point you just have to evolve that position or you have to look at what's happening in front of you and say, hey, this could work. Could it win a national championship? Nobody's saying that. All we're saying is that team today looked better than a Colorado team has probably looked in a football game in half a decade or more in one game. And regardless of the opponent, regardless of whether you want to consider it a massive upset or not, the one thing that you must agree to I don't even think this is subjective, is that Colorado has already Mm -hmm. made progress as a program with the decision to bring in Dion and pretty much allow him to do what he came there to do. They haven't micromanaged him to death. They've let him come in there and be Dion Sanders, and now we get to see what that looks like. And after one week, it looks pretty daggone good.